The next topic is going to be visualization of tensors, of describing the, the sum frequency and second harmonic response. And the motivation behind this is really uh, to, to provide chemical and molecular intuition into understanding nonlinear optics and to allow the results of quantum mechanical calculations to be interpreted uh, in a coordinate independent manner. Uh, and the reason for coordinate independence is, uh, is shown here, or illustrated here. So you might have some visual representation, and I'll go through what each of these corresponds to in a moment, but these, these representations are, are in many ways equivalent to a set of 27 numbers uh, that you would get from a quantum chemical calculation. In the case of, of second harmonic generation, really, or some frequency, typically only 18 of these are, are truly independent. Uh, but uh, but you still are describing it for, uh, the output of most quantum chemical calculations is a set of a set of numbers and then the, the question is how do you intuit and, and, and describe that one of the problems is, is if you just choose a different coordinate system for describing exactly the same molecule you end up with a different set of 27 numbers and so is this a new result is it the same or is it the same result in a different coordinate system and then how do we manage to go back and forth between those fairly easily it turns out that if you've got a good set of visualization tools it's really easy to tell the difference between um, two similar outcomes in different coordinate systems but it's very difficult to do so just in, by inspection of the numbers themselves so part of the motivation is to simplify the interpretation in a coordinate independent manner. The other is to provide some molecular and chemical intuition into what's driving and, 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 and um, to what's... So one motivation is to provide this coordinate independent... <clears throat> So one motivation, obviously, is to provide a, an important independent representation of the molecular system. The other hope is that, uh, that, that these sorts of visualization techniques provide some additional clarification in terms of the fundamental physics of the light matter interactions. Uh, okay, so going back. Okay. Okay, so if we, were, if we recall from the previous discussion, the... So from the previous discussion, the nonlinear polarizability can be described in terms of uh, a transition moment and an alpha. And that alpha either describes Raman, as in the case of vibrational sum frequency generation, or two-photon absorption in the case of electronic resonance. Uh, so let's start out with the transition moment. And this transition moment could be either a vibrational or electronic transition moment. In either case, we can represent it by a vector. And the, uh, the transition moment is a vector property, so we can describe that in a coordinate independent way as a single-sided arrow, which is a fairly straightforward and intuitive representation of the, of the transition moment. So then the next question is, how do we treat, for example, the Raman polarizability in the case of some frequency generation? Uh, well, it's now not a vector property. It is really more formally described by a matrix. It's a three by three matrix. So how do we visualize a matrix the, uh, in the case of a diagonal matrix, or in, in the more general case of a, of a Hermitian matrix, we can describe that by its eigenvectors. So the three eigenvectors of the matrix correspond to the principal moments, and those are depicted by the, uh, by the double-sided arrows shown right here. This is, for example, a one visual representation for the Raman polarizability, where the three principal moments uh, the, the eigenvectors are, the, the, these double-sided arrows are co-parallel with the three orthogonal eigenvectors described in that matrix, and the magnitude of the, of the arrow is proportional to the magnitude of the corresponding eigenvector. Uh, now, maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't, uh, but you can, in, in any coordinate system, reconstruct the Raman polarizability from the three diagonal melt elements in the principal coordinate system, just like a principal moment of inertia. Now, sometimes in the case of Raman polarizability, unlike in moments of inertia, you can have either a positive or a negatively signed electric field, and that's all relative to the driving field. In the case of a negative sign, uh, we depict that by a, a red dashed arrow as opposed to a solid blue arrow. So we can keep track of both magnitude and sign for the principal moments through this simple Sagittary representation. Now, all we have to do is combine these to describe, in a Sagittary, in a Sagittary representation, i.e. an arrow-based representation, we can describe the, the numerator in the, uh, the hyperpolarizability, the nonlinear polarizability. And I'll give you an example here for some frequency generation, where we saw from the previous slide that in the case of some frequency generation, 
Boy, my handwriting is terrible. That's omega vis and omega sum. And this is omega ir. That in the case of residence enhancement with state n, then the numerator has the form 0 to n, has the form of the transition moment. The numerator is given by this right here. The denominator is given by, oops, I just chose the same color. The, the denominator is, is described by this paired interaction for the anti-Stokes Raman. So if we have this, uh, we know in the numerator all the polarization dependent properties are going to be described by the transition moment for one photon absorption and the anti-Stokes Raman tensor. Um, and those can be depicted by this set of arrows. So the Sagittary representation provides a manner for visualizing the resonant component of a, of a transition moment, or the resonant component of a, of a, of a nonlinear polarizability uh, in a coordinate independent manner. In the case of second harmonic generation, it also, the numerator also depends on, an, on a mu and an alpha. The mu in this case is now the electronic transition moment so that would correspond to the mu being this interaction where we have a real state close to the, uh, the sum frequency in, or the second harmonic. Uh, so that is now the blue term corresponds to this interaction and the red term corresponds to another alpha, but now the alpha is describing the matrix for two photon absorption. But again, that's a symmetric matrix. Uh, Typically, the, the Raman is assumed to be a symmetric matrix, and so if it's symmetric, we can represent it by its three eigenvectors and, uh, and eigenvalues. And those can be graphically depicted just like they can for the, re for the vibrational resonance uh, using these uh, the, the simple double-sided arrows, simple set of three double-sided arrows. So in the case of the electronic contributions to SHG, or some frequency generation, uh, we, can we can describe those entirely by this, again, a virtually identical, in terms of um, design, set of single-sided and double-sided arrows.